You know, I want to speak to you about something that's real, real weighty. And it's, 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 it's real important that you know this. Because in life, oftentimes, there is a, there's a Balaam spirit towards God that you have that you don't know that that's the reason why something is happening in your pathway that you really don't like. But it's you the one that's causing it. Let me give you an example. Say Austin is watching something that God is telling him not to watch. And Austin keeps on watching it. Austin keeps on watching it. And then Austin gets cataracts. Austin get blind in one of his eyes. Now, you can't just look at that scenario and be like, hey, the devil, the devil, the devil. You have to look at that scenario with completion, with full evaluation and the correct balance and see, well, there was an instruction not to do something. And Austin rejected the instruction to not do it. So now we look at the, the result of what's happening. The curse does not come causeless. And it was Solomon that walked in this revelation that a curse is cause. Now, there are some scenarios in life where things happen and it's not always how you perceive it to be. It may not be someone's specific fault. It could be the result of other people involved in the storyline. It could be the result of somebody betraying. You know, betrayal is when someone rejects their good part in another person's story. You ever thought about that? Betrayal is when somebody rejects the, their good part in someone else's story. So when somebody betrays somebody, it is a rejection of the good part, the innocent part, the pure part that you're playing someone else's story. So things like that do happen. But when you get to the nitty gritty of life, there are many times where God is talking to you, but you're not listening. And you proceed and do your own thing. And then there are consequences. And saints, when consequences come, everybody cries, get me out. Help me. I'm burning. I, I, I'm going through it. Get me out. Everybody cries that. But have you dealt with how you got in? See, the, 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 the major part in some circumstances is not how do I get out? The real Victory is how did I even get in? How did I get in? Because if, 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 if how did I get in is the issue, if I fix that, I'll be out ASAP. But if I don't discover how I got in and I'm trying to figure out how I get out, I'm going to end up in again. Because the real point wasn't on how to get out. The real point was what caused me to get in. Let me show you something. Say this girl's name is Brittany. And she ends up going to a club. And there's a shooting at the club and she cries. She crawling people on the phone. She calling 911. She calling everybody. Get me out. Get me out. Help, help, help. And she going to the security guard. Please help me out. Help me out. And she's trying to get out of the shooting. Okay. Watch this here. So she escapes the shooting. Not one gunshot. Not no robbery. She ain't get hurt. But Brittany never recognizes that the real problem in this situation wasn't on how to get out of a shooting. The real problem in the situation was how did you get in the club? Because that's where the shooting happened. So days later, weeks later pass, and Brittany goes to another club. And then nothing happens there. She goes to another club. 
And nothing happens there. She travels and goes to the clubs in that city. And then a shooting happens while she's in the club in that city. And she cries out, get me out, get me out, get me out. And she's focused on getting out. But the real problem is how did you get in? If you fix how you're getting in, you'll be out. And you wouldn't even have to search for how to get out. Because how you got in is making you get in a predicament where you're trying to get out. And saints, people are not recognizing this. Balaam is being told an instruction from God and he ignores the instruction. Now he's in a situation where he needs to get delivered. There's an angel standing in front of him to kill him. And just think about this. The whole problem is not Balaam, how do we get out of the angel killing us? The problem is, why is the angel attempting to kill me? <sighs> Jonah's problem is not, how am I going to get out of the fish? The problem is, how did I get in the fish? How many times is the Lord talking to you throughout your life and you're looking for a way out when the real underlying problem is how did you get in? You want to get out so bad not knowing that you're going to get in again because the whole problem is not the deliverance. It's the decisions that you're making. Or if God just give me a house, or if God just give me a car, or if I just get this job, or I just get that one million, if I just get that breakthrough. If you just get that, it's going to be governed by something that you are that God wants to change. And so what you have will eventually deteriorate It'll die off. Because who you are and how you operate doesn't have the, the management for what God would deposit to you. So you need to start looking at your life at what is God telling me that I ignore? Not how do I change this season? How did this season start? Not how do I change this trouble I'm in, but how did this trouble start? Not how do I get out of this sin, but how did I start this sin? Because if you get out of the sin, you'll go right back to the sin because you're not dealing with what started it. You're focusing on, I just want to end it. But you don't understand, if you don't deal with what started it, psychologically, even though you end it, when the going gets tough and the tough gets going, you're going to go right back to it. Because you're not dealing with why you started. It's like somebody being a bitter person. They never deal with that they're a bitter person. They just deal with what people do to them. And then time and time happens, right? And they say, I forgive. I'm going to forgive this person. I'm forgive this person. But they haven't confronted that they are a bitter person. They haven't denounced that, confronted that. Renew their mind against that. So somebody is going to do something enough that's rough, that's tough to you. And now it's impossible for you to forgive them. Because see, you was dealing with, okay, I forgive this person, I forgive this person. You're getting out of situations quickly, quickly. But you're not dealing with the root that you're bitter. That's, that's the nature so now the right person comes along, does something to you, and now you're saying, I ain't going to forgive them for that. Now they're not getting past that. 
But see, it's not what they did to you. This is just exposing who you are that you never confronted this person, that this person is bitter. This is the bitter you. See, people don't really look at it like that. Saints, that's why the enemy will send somebody that does something greater in evil towards you so that you could see who you are. See, saints, that's how you know that Jesus was without sin because they did the greatest evil to Jesus and Jesus does not manifest evil. If some of you all experience what Jesus experienced, you will start cussing, arguing, fighting. Oh, no, nah, not this time. Oh, no, I, I had enough. Oh, da, 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 da. And see, that is a result of exposure to who you are. And the situation is bringing out who you are. See, if you don't change who you are, Satan's going to send the right scenario to you and you're going to manifest as who you are that you didn't know you was. You, that's who you are, but you don't know that as you. And the right situation going to bring it out. The right situation going to bring it out. Because saints, sometimes the, the level of pressure is not high enough for you to even see who you really are. The pressure not as high. Saints, if you go cook something and you just turn on that little that little uh, 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 measure that that measure of the heat and you just turn it on a little bit, do you know that what you cook and won't cook? The fire got to be enough to cook it. You got to turn it up. It got to get hot enough. It got to get intense enough for you to actually cook it. But saints, there are some things that are inside of everybody, that until the pressure is right, you won't see that evil cooking out of you. You won't see it. The situation got to be right enough for you to see it. The, 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 the pressure got to be right enough for you to see it. Saints, I want you to think about this, and I want you to think about this. Do not get so tied into I want this to get out. I want this to stop. I want this to, 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 to be healed. I want this to be. Start thinking about, is God speaking to me through this to stop me from something that I don't want to stop doing? Do you know how many times somebody keeps on going to place in their vehicle and then their vehicle breaks down and they don't stop? They look for the next vehicle. They look for somebody else to give them a ride. They look to take the bus or Uber or Lyft. And God using every scenario to hinder them. And they don't catch it. When you on the wrong path, wrong stuff going to happen to you. When you're on the wrong path, wrong stuff is going to happen to you. Wrong stuff is going to happen to you. You're going to experience pain when you're on the wrong path. When you're doing the, the opposite to the will of God, you will experience things in your body. You will experience things in your finances, in your mind, in your emotions, because God is not pleased. And if God not pleased, you're not always going to be feeling pleasure. The goal is to learn how to learn through wisdom and not wounds. Because everybody learns most of the time through wounds. You need to be hit before you stop doing it. You're supposed to be a child of God, not the childishness. You're supposed to be a child, not childishness. Childishness will make the father hit you. 
And he'll hit you with something to wake you up. And so many people are saying, don't hit me. Get me out of this wound. Get me out of this hit. And you're not dealing with what caused the hit. What caused the wound. What caused the fight. You just focused on, let the fight end cease. Let the battle stop. Let the pain ease. Let the hurt stop. Let the crucifixion end. Let the turmoil end. Let the adversity be canceled. You're looking at all the things that you want to stop because it's not making you feel good. But you're not recognizing that your decision's not making God feel good. Your words not making God feel good. Who you connect with not making God feel good. Who you have sex with not making God feel good. What you're drinking, smoking, what you're looking at is not making God feel good. And if you're not going to deal with that, don't think that you dealing with other stuff is going to fix how your life is going. You got to deal with the stuff that's affecting God first. You'll be shocked how many people think I have a right to be pleasured right now. But, but you won't give pleasure to God. He won't see no faith out of you. He's not going to see no submission out of you. He's not going to see no obedience out of you. But you want what is in turmoil in your life to switch. But you won't switch. You won't stop your decision. But you want to stop the pain. You won't stop your disobedience, but you want him to stop your adversity. How many things is happening to you because it started happening through you? And you're architecting this turmoil. If you meet Jonah and Jonah comes to you for prayer and you're up there praying for Jonah, papayas, papaya, papayas, papayas, a papayas, a church's chicken, a chicken, Chick-fil-A, a cachito, Chick-fil-A, a cachito, and you praying all day for Jonah to come out of his situation. And Jonah has a situation coming to him because the situation started coming through him. And you're up there praying all day. I said the ice cream. I said the ice cream. I said the ice cream. Ice cream, ice cream. Cake, buttercream, buttercream, crock skin. King, 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 crock skin. You're praying all day for Jonah. And Jonah, <laughs> Jonah is the mother loving problem. Jonah has an instruction where God told him what he wants. And Jonah said no. And now Jonah going through it. And you're up there praying for Jonah. And Jonah actually feels that he should be delivered out of his situation. And the situation comes to him because the situation came through him. He's the cause of the curse, but he doesn't recognize it. Saints, I'm going to tell you like this here. Don't live your whole life blaming everything on the outside and not looking on the inside to figure out, are you provoking this problem? Am I innocent? Am I blameless? That's like somebody going to the strip club, spending all their money, and then say, the enemy is fighting me. I can't pay my rent. I can't pay my bills. I can't. The enemy is fighting me. The enemy is fighting you? It's your hands that threw money on the strip club. And everything that's now coming to you first came through you. And the problem was produced by your own perversion. 
Saints, that's why I like David. Because God kills the baby that he has in a moment where he's not following instruction. And David tried to intercede for the child. And God lets him know, I'm doing this because of your decision. I ain't changing. Your decision has produced this destruction, this death. If you follow me, this don't happen. If you don't follow me, this happens. And David was real enough and man enough to recognize I, I have agreed for this consequence to now manifest in, at this point in my life. I'm not blaming no spirit. I'm not talking about, oh no, this is a generational curse. Double flood, pluck, all of that. You know, there's a people that's rising up. They're going to blame everything on the generational curse. You know, this is this is who God made me to be. This is this is what I'm going through. This is this is this is this is this is this is you know you you know this 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 was passed down from my grandfather. You know, grandfather went through all this. Great grand grandmama, my grandmama, she used to go to sleep with candy necklace. The aunt used to bite her. I can't help. Go to sleep with a candy necklace. I got lollipops around my neck. I got nihilators and laffy taffies around my neck when I go to sleep. And they biting me. But I can't help it. You got to understand it came from grandma. She used to get bit at night. Now I'm getting bite. They bite my neck, bite my wrist. I wake up. I can't even put my bracelet on. I can't put my bracelet on. I got two bumps on my forehead. I got two bumps. And everybody wants to blame why things happen to them as if they're innocent. And I'm telling you, take time and look and see if possibly this is happening in my life as the word of the Lord to me to stop. This that's taking place is God giving me a clear message to stop. And I can sit right there and act like I don't hear. Oh, I need this fix or change this or if this just fix. And I am looking at something I can't shake. It's tangible. I could feel it in my body. I could feel it in my bones. I could feel it in my mind. I could see it daily. I can't run from it. Apostle Paul had a thorn in his flesh. He couldn't run from it. He felt it. It was tangible. It was emotional. It, it was emotional. It was mental. It was psychological. He felt it. He couldn't run from it. And that was God talking to him. Jacob had a limp in his walk. Every day that he woke up, he couldn't help that his hip bone was out of socket, that he walked a certain way. He couldn't deny it. Other people saw it. He saw it himself. If he looked in the mirror, he saw it himself. And God is speaking every time Jacob looks at this hip out of joy. Stop. Every time Apostle Paul has this storm pricking his flesh, this pain, this discomfort, stop. Every time you see these people going through stuff in the word and these issues and God saying, I'm going to show you something that you can't shake or run from it. It's going to be so obvious. You're going to see it. I'm telling you to stop. 